wants to get straight into it, okay? I'm not here to play games, I'm here to do stuff, I've got a job to do. And, um, but um, we've already prayed, his presence was already here. Mm. My job is to um, make sure he's welcome here. Make sure he feels welcome, not make sure that he's safe, <laughs> that this is a safe place. And not every house is safe, not every place is safe for the Holy Spirit. In the sense of, he's God, but at the same time, he can be grieved, he can be quenched, he can be insulted, and he can be resisted. And so, um, I found that I can go places and if the atmosphere isn't welcoming to him, I think it's pretty good here. I think it's pretty good here. But I just want to, uh, just, uh, I was in uh, the Solomon Islands uh, a few years ago, and, uh, and I had words of knowledge over some people in the room that God, Jesus wanted to heal right there. That they would stand, they would get healed instantly. Mm -hmm. But they didn't stand. Mm -hmm. and, and Holy Spirit said to me, don't minister my presence in this place. It's not a safe house. Wow. He said, tell them that. And so, I, but, so I'm the guest. I have to slide into this. This is the first time I've prayed to him, and he said, tell them that he, I'm not, and I said, I'm not allowed to minister Holy Spirit into this place tonight because he said there's no wine here. There's no hunger. There's no humility. He says, I'm, because I'm, I've, I've been sent by him with gifts, and I'm handing out his gifts, and you won't receive them. You're not rejecting me, it's nothing about me, it's about the one who sent me. Mm -hmm. And there's an honor Amen. or hunger for what he's sent me with. To their credit, they repented immediately when I saw one of the biggest moves of God I've ever seen wow. in any place in the world. The biggest move of God, it was there for God. incredible. So, um, yeah, beloved, may you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. So, the Tina and your body, your Hikinaru, your mind, and your Wailua, your spirit, your body, soul, and spirit. Has to be in alignment, and uh, our spirit is always Katie Pie. Our spirit is always strong, it's healthy, it, it's, 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 it's eternal, it doesn't get sick, right? Your white word doesn't get mumbo weedy, doesn't get the flu. Your, your spirit, your white word, does not get sick, doesn't get tired, doesn't get nasty, just loves, worships Jesus. But your soul does. Your soul yeah. gets sort of, uh, your soul gets a bit hoha. Mine does sometimes too. Your mind and your emotions. And that reflects on your dinner and your body. And so if your soul's not, not in alignment with God and not honoring in the presence of God, then it's going to reflect in your physical body. And a lot of healings never last because people, it's not their body that's, that, that's out of alignment with God, it's their soul. It's their mind, it's their emotions, it's the stuff that's going on inside, it's their bad behavior, it's their sinful activity, selfish activity. And they're carrying on like this on the inward and their soul, and they expect their bodies to retain the mind health. Or they're living and walking in selfishness and sin and, 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 and rebellion, and disobedience to God, and they expect their bodies to be against why? It doesn't work like that. Because mm -hmm. if white or doesn't feel uh, uh, honored, in my soul, he's not going to feel honored in my tina and my life my body. So it's a matter about getting things in alignment, as uh, Pastor Bruce said. That we can, I walk in divine health. Now, I'm not always chasing a healing. Sometimes I need a healing, but most of the time I live in divine health. Uh, the other day we went to uh, some place, and this lady said, and so who's your doctor? I said, I don't have one. Have you not got a doctor? I said, no. Nah. I haven't had a doctor for about, so I was on it 40 years. I don't have a doctor. And I've been to the doctor from time to time, but I don't have, because he's kept me divine health by the grace of God. As my soul prospers, my body prospers. So here's some of the things that that, that Holy Spirit feels welcome to that. Now he's here tonight. He, he's here tonight. Wow. And he doesn't come just because of your faith. He comes, he comes because of relationship. He comes because of relationship, because um, he has always loved you. Okay, and um, faith has a part to do with it. But, um, you know, last night I was talking to him before he came here. I said, Well, Lord, I, I want you to feel welcome, Holy Spirit. I want you to come into this body. 
and I want you to feel welcome and honored. He says, well, I I want you to. <laughs> <laughs> and he just gave me this little thought. He said, I'll come. Oh, because of you. Because I'm honored and welcome in your house. And because I feel safe with you, I'll come. But he said, if I didn't feel safe in you, why do you think I'd come? To a, to a meeting. Why do you think I would come at the invitation of a meeting if I'm not even feeling safe in your life? I'm feeling dishonored in your heart. Why would I come? That's a good point. So I'm friends with why you were Holy Spirit, why you were up on the inside. And therefore, most places I can go and he will come. Now, he's here because of you too, because uh, you, you, you love God too, and you've been honoring him. So he's honored. But I'm going beyond just an event, beyond just a service today. It's about those who want divine, who want divine healing and keeping that divine healing. You, you walk out of here, you keep it. It doesn't dribble out like a, like a plug's coming up. It doesn't leak out for you. That you maintain, you keep that. Oh, that's your that's his presence. The, I, I, the Holy Spirit says someone's going to be healed. Their varicose veins will be healed tonight. So is anyone here with varicose veins? Okay, I oh, well. You will know because you will feel it happening. The fire will burn through your, through your bloodstream. Okay? The fire will burn through your bloodstream. Now, I'm not like a lot of. Well, I used to hit all sorts of ways of methods of healing. I just wait on Holy Spirit now. Uh, his way is the best. He just walks among. He's walking among right now, checking you out. He's checking out your hearts. He's checking out your soul. He's checking out to see if there's any obstruction there. And so I've got to speak to that. So I'm going to go straight into it. Um, to make the Holy Spirit welcome in your place. Mm. If he's welcome in your place, not just on Sunday, but every day. Mm. <laughs> not just Sunday, but every day. It's so funny, eh? As Christians, it's like, oh, Lord, we love you. We give our lives to you. It's Sunday from Monday to Saturday. It's like, oh, whatever. Uh, like, oh, how that? Instead of being a cool heart, we're a whole heart. <laughs> Instead of bring a gift just to humanity, we are from the pain in their heart. So it's about living for Jesus. Yes. So um, God is in this place. Uh, what's happened since I've been here last? How many were here last time I was here? Oh, kia ora. Good to see you again. And those who are first time here, kia ora, kia ora, kia ora. Um, what, what's happened since the last time? I hope you've got miracles. I mean, it's been three months. I see moves of God every week. I have a testimony of a move of God every week. Every week. But I pursue it. I look for it. And I just follow the Holy Spirit wherever he's going. Do you know the Holy Spirit's in town? You know when Jacinda turns up in town? Prime Minister? Everybody goes at the airport? There's a, well, if not everybody goes at there. But if you're at the airport and Jacinda turned up, you go, oh, no, what's she doing in town? I grew up at nosy ass. Put aside the political side, but if she turned up in, in your airport, you'd say, oh, I wonder what she's doing in town. I wonder who she's going to see. I wonder where she's going. I wonder what she's up to. Hey. So imagine Holy Spirit turns up in your town, dressed as a human, with some clothes. Imagine if he turns up like that. I know about you, but I go, what are you doing? Who have you come to see? Where are you going? And that's what it means to be led of the Spirit. Um, he's in town every day. He's in your town every day. You don't have to go to the airport. He's in your fuddy. He's in your house. But every day I go, what are you doing in town today, Jesus? What are you doing? What are you doing, Holy Spirit, today? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to see? Because I'm his body. You're his body. He's a way, but he's a spirit. He needs someone to walk through. So where do you want to go today, Holy Spirit? Well, we're going to go to, over to the dark side today. <laughs> really? Yeah, there's a neighborhood over there and there's, someone's going to take their life. I said, really? Yeah. Okay. So sometimes we think, oh, the Holy Spirit will walk to us onto a mountain where the Shekinah glory is and we'll be, oh, red and shaking. Sometimes why do we go 
goes to the tinny house or to the game pit or down to pack and save where there's some poor old soul struggling to get their groceries out. Sometimes that's where he leads us. Pastor Scotty said the other day, he said, oh, because I'm, ta I'm teaching people to find out what he's doing in town and who he's going to see and follow him. Stalk him. Stalk him. <laughs> Stalk Holy Spirit. And now uh, Scotty said, finally, I've got my time and my prayer group. Oh, and Holy Spirit, I'm not here. I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm in the neck of the bathroom. By that light bulb, your wife's been asking you to fix for ages. I'm out there. What? <laughs> See, the light Holy Spirit, he was out there. So he went out there, unscrewed his light bulb, and he says, the power of God, the power of God, then off him off the, off the ladder. He said, the presence of God is so strong. Sometimes we over-spiritualize God where he's leading us to. It's always something super spiritual and, and mystical. And, and that's wonderful. You can have those encounters, but it's everyday life. It's everyday life. Holy Spirit is so practical. So, um, so <clears throat> what have I been doing the last few weeks or the last three months? Uh, I've been up to Ahimara, down in the outreach up there. I've uh, been to Whangarei, to the outreach up there. Um, been to uh, Kawaka, uh, done an outreach up there, and besides in Gizzi, and there's an outreach every day in my city. You should be outreaching every day, eh? For your neighbours, your workmates, and every day you should be shining for Jesus. I don't mean wrapping the Bible down this road, I mean just being Jesus to people. So, uh, do you want to hear some miracles of the last time I was living with you? Yeah. I've got your faith. So, uh, this is a young lady up at uh, Tauranga, uh, no, sorry, Whangarei. Her name's Moana. She said, um, the doctors test me today, <clears throat> or they're not today. She said, the doctors had tested her and told her she's allergic to cow's milk and dairy products. She said, when I drank dairy, I would swell up like a blowfish with a swollen throat and I could feel, I could lose, I lost all feeling in my lips. And she said, um, since, uh, since that prayer up there, she says, I've been drinking milk and, and I've got no symptoms whatsoever. That was a few, that was a few weeks ago. Yeah. 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 This is uh, at Kaiwaka, her Bible church. Uh, church started at 10.30, finished at 3 p.m. <laughs> this is church. And, uh, and here's one of the testimonies. Uh, this lady says, my mum was back in illness. She said, we'll never forget the experience that we had. Uh, when, yeah, she says, my mum was back in illness and had only partial sight in one of her eyes. After the service, of her eye kept pouring out water, and it continued for a few days. After that, it cleared up. And we're all rejoicing for my mum. She, she could see clearly. My mum was walking testimony of, uh, of revival in our church. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Pastor Taft said, this lady and her whole family all gave their lives to Jesus after this testimony. And her mum also had a stroke, and her face is back to normal now. The power of miracles is leading people to salvation. <laughs> there was a... Uh, a lady in Countdown, and out, down in Countdown in our, in our city, and uh, she had the onset of MS, and so she had to um, she had to uh, leave work because of the disease, and she got a bill run and building a wire path for the for wheelchair access and all that sort of stuff. So she was preparing for her decline. It was a couple, it came on very rapidly, the shaking and so forth and so on. She was open for a couple of years. So I went and prayed for her, and. Um, and I never heard about it. I never heard from her for a couple of years. And then um, I'm sitting down at the countdown one day, and I see her in the countdown foyer doing a raffle for the MS Society. So I said, oh, I haven't seen you for a while. You look pretty good. I said, how are you doing? I said, but did you get, what happened with the MS? She says, I'm completely healed. I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. <laughs> so I'm thanking for the MS to help people who do get it, who do get it. And, um, then there was another lady in Countdown, and, and she also was about to hand in an odor. She was in such back pain. And, um, and, and so I walked around, and she's, she's, like, she, and she's telling me that, that she's going to have to hand in an odor and give up work because she can't stand the back pain. It's excruciating back pain. She's had it for days and days. And so she was going to throw her, her notice in. So she's at the counter, the counter, the counter, the counter. 
So I said, quickly, grab the hand. I said, in the name of Jesus, just release power on her. And, um, and her back, God just straightened her back like that. And she just couldn't believe it. She said, what? <laughs> that, that was, I don't know, that was ages ago. She's completely good down there. Um, I want miracles of the past and miracles of Ahibara. There's so many miracles. I can't keep them all. Keep up them all. That's why I have to write them down. Oh, Johnetta, she was up at the Ahibara. She said, as I, um, today, she said, I came for part of my healing for my ankles. My ankle was healed. It's an old sock injury. I've had it for over 20 years. As I, as I got older, it started to ache, and doctors were saying that it uh, would probably be arthritis. Well, I couldn't tiptoe, do tiptoes on it. Uh, it lacked strength. Uh, but today, I was, and I could only hop along on it. But however, today, my ankle now has the same strength as the other, and I can tiptoe. That's just my lifestyle. And, uh, I, you know, we're all different, okay? We're all wired by God different. We have different giftings and so forth. Uh, we all have the same Holy Spirit. And we all have Jesus. And people need Jesus. And there's such a lack of laborers for the harvest today. It doesn't matter if you don't have the gift of miracles. The Holy Ghost will probably use you because there's hardly any Christians out there. They're out, they're, they're, they're out of the office. They're out of the office of the believer. So the office of the believer is in Mark 16, 17. Jesus said that these signs shall follow them who believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils, they'll speak in tongues, they'll take up serpents, and they'll drink poison and won't hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. That's the office of the believer. It's not the office of the pastor, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, or the teacher. It's the office of the believer. Are you a believer? Put your hand up. It's your office. It's your office. And John 14, 12, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, the works I do, he will do also. Who is he talking about? He that believes. He's talking to the apostles, but not about the apostles. He's talking to the apostles about anyone who believes. The office of the believer, heck, I mean, if the believers just got back in their office, we would, maybe would see a revival with waiting for the apostles to go Now, I don't know about you, but you go to some shops and this are uh, out of the office for five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, or whatever, out of the office. You ever see the sign like that? Something similar? This is my, this isn't real, this is just my imagery. Jesus brings up Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, yes. Now, look, could you get somebody to go down, down, down to some, such a street and get it? Um, there's, there's a family down there that really need help. They're crying out to me. They're praying. They don't go to church. Now they want help. Could you send someone from the church down there? And the Holy Spirit says, oh, sorry, Lord. They're all out of their office. <laughs> Can't find any believer. They're all out of their office. And that's what it's like. Me, the, the, the harvest, you don't pray for the harvest. You pray for the laborers. Jesus said, don't pray for the harvest. It's already white. It's always ready. It's the laborers. The laborers, guess who they are? Did you put your hand up before? Sure. So I can just about guarantee there's someone in your neighborhood who the Holy Spirit wants to visit. But he's never going to visit them because you are out of your office. He's never going to get the chance to visit them because you're going to probably pray for somebody else to visit them. Hey, move your arm. I'm telling you, if there's a neighbor in your, in your street who's hungry but he doesn't have enough kai, and you've got a little bit more kai than them, that's your ministry. That's you. Holy Spirit's looking for somebody. Now, believe, is there a believer down there in their office? Oh, they're out of their office. And it doesn't mean you have to go and lay hands on them, but just take a kai to them. We're doing a thing called Sowing Hope. I had a dream about three, four weeks ago. And in this dream, I was going door to door in my street. And I was putting a seed into the heart of these people. And their faces would just smile. And then the Lord said, now move on. Don't preach to them. Just put a seed of hope in their hearts and move on. And put another seed of hope into their heart and move on. Because I like to preach. I like to lead people to Jesus. He says, don't do that. Just be me. Don't try and get them saved. He says, just sow seeds of hope into their lives. 
I water the seed, not you. I cause the growth, not you. You sow, you water, you break up the fallow ground, and you reap sometimes, but I'm the one that makes the seed grow. So that's a dream. And the, the scripture was, Isaiah 58, if you pour out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness and will, it will, it will shine, your light will rise in obscurity. Uh, like in the darkness be like noonday. And your waters will never run dry. You'll be like a well-watered garden whose waters never fail. And so many Christians come to church, oh, fill me, Lord, fill me, fill me with more, more, more. Jesus said, yeah, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. He's talking about aloha. He's talking about power. He's talking about deliverance. He's talking about hope. He's talking about pouring it out, pouring it out. All the believers around the office, so they don't pour it out. And they come and say, Lord, fill me more, more. He's like, I can't fill you more. You haven't given rid of what you've got. I can only fill you when you pour out. So, the more you pour out what you carry, the more God will fill you. Mabel's one of my daughters, one of my spiritual daughters. She came to one of my rap forces down in Invercargill, had an encounter with Jesus. Look, she's looking even more beautiful. <laughs> so good to see you. Mabel's hungry. She's hungry for God. I was telling her the story about when I was in India. And um, there were these blind people who came to me. I've never seen a blind person healed in my life. I read about it, prayed for it, wanted to see it, never seen it in my life. And I went to India in 1989, first time to India. And I said, Lord, if possible, can I pray for a blind person? He opened his eyes. He says, yeah. I said, yeah. So I was taken to the place, and they brought a blind person to me. And my interpreter told me this man is blind in one eye. Oh, here we go. In the name of Jesus, I did the prayer. And I said, How is he? He said, He has recovered. He can now see. I said, What? I didn't feel it. Ask him again. Was he really blind? He said, He was really blind, but now he can see. What? He, like, he wasn't jumping up and down or anything. I was. Are you sure? I said, I didn't feel the thunder. I didn't feel the earthquake. I didn't feel the anointing. I didn't feel nothing. But he was healed. So I went for another, I was to find me another blind person, and he did, and the Lord healed that one. After three blind people that were healed, boom, 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 and I was getting a bit cocky, and I thought, oh, I've got this faith, I've got this power, I've got the power, I've got the power! <laughs> so, so there were a fourth man to me, this is over a period of about several days, and this is the village uh, I was in. This man had a big growth sticking out of his eye. And he uh, was lying just in that eye, that eye he could see. I said, put your hand over your good eye. Can you see anything? No. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Go out of blindness, be healed. And I'm all waiting there for him to say, I can see. But Jeremy, he's still blind. I thought a bit more. Kaha into it. Oh, smash this devil. So in the name of Jesus, did it. That's Adam. He's still blind. Oh, and all my faith just went. Because you have hundreds of Hindus watching me. I'm saying that this Jesus can do anything. Oh, uh, yeah. So I said, What do I do, Lord? And Jesus said to me, Will you do to this blind man what I did to a blind man? I said, When? When I spat on his eyes. Will you spit on this blind man? I said, yeah, because I'm an Indian, no one knows me anyway, I don't care. <laughs> okay, look, I'll have one up for it. But how do you spit in someone's eyes? Who come now? Spit on my fingers, said, wiped it over his eyes, and I took my hand off. He, he started shouting, I see, I see the stars, I see the stars. <laughs> When I was sharing that story, man, I thought she was having a She jumped up her seat, she got on her knees, and she started crying out, spit in my eyes, spit in my eyes, spit in my eyes. And at the start, I thought she was having a 
but she wasn't. She had tangi tangi, and she had this eye disease. She had get injections in the eyes, and they told her she couldn't go blind, and she could only see the peripheral, from what I remember. And so we prayed for her. Jesus delivered her from an ancestral spirit, and then began to touch her eyes. And what happened after that, Mabel? You want to tell the rest of the story? I had to keep standing on that healing because it started to go bad. And then I talked to Papa. Papa said, just hang in there. Papa, no. And for over a period of two years, I just kept standing on that healing. Even when other people say, oh, Mabel's not well, her eyes are not good. I kept standing on the healing. And now I can see. As well. That, that's just my sounds my Mabel's hungry. Are you hungry? Yes. What have you come for tonight? Have you come for a healing for your demon? That's good. Take the point. Really, I've received off really good. But I want to make sure you keep it. So my friend Bill Sabrisky, he used to have a thing called the Sin List. <laughs> it's pretty gross, pretty it was pretty graphic. I'm not gonna go right into the detail that he went into. But it was obstacles and blockages to healing. So I'm going to put that out there to share with you, just to make sure you, you remove hindrances to your healing. But there's more than healing, and the Holy Spirit wants to give you more than healing. He wants to, he wants to move in with you. Uh, well, he's already in you, if you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, he's already in you. But uh, he wants to get out of the... Um, for some of you, he wants to get out of the cellar. He wants to come into the kitchen, start cooking some things up. For some of you, he wants to move into the living room and become your friend. Uh, so every part, every door of your heart, every door of your house down. And uh, he, wants to, he, wants, he wants to take possession of your house. And some of you think it's still your house, but it's not your house, it's his house. Oh, yes. It's his house. Lovely. And he wants to move in. Uh, and in order to move in, you've got to move out. Yeah. You've got to move some stuff out. He's, he will probably rearrange the pictures on the wall. <laughs> So, um, so a couple of things. Is it God's will? Is it Jesus' will to heal you today? We'll put that in a moment. You might say yes, but where is it biblically? Do you know it biblically? You gotta know it biblically. You gotta know what His Word says. You don't base your faith on His Word, not on a feeling, not on a, a desire, not on a wish, not because you heard somebody say, "By His wounds I'm healed." You gotta base it on what the scripture says. How do you know you're saved? John 3 16, for God said love it. You know it's based on the word of God. And if your faith isn't based on what his words, what he speaks, what he said, then you won't hold on for it for long. See, the, the, the first thing Satan attacked Jesus was uh, was his identity. He said, if you are the Son of God, then turn the stone into bread. Jesus said, It is written. And every time Jesus attacked the devil, he said, It is written, it is written. And he quoted scripture. He based everything he did on the Word of God. He was the Word of God, and he based everything. And if it took Jesus using the Word of God to push the devil back, what are we going to have to use to just put demons back, spirits of sickness back? We've got to make sure that we know how to use the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. So I've been sick, I've had lots of afflictions, but Jesus has healed me from them all. Praise his name. But I know what his Word says about healing. So I want to teach you about that in a minute so that you base your faith. Not on what I say tonight, not because I lay hands on you, but because of what Jesus says. So, um, honor and faith. Um, it's not a complicated thing, but uh, we Christians make it complicated. Remember Jesus, I don't have time to go all the scriptures, but remember Jesus in his hometown? And um, they said, oh, we know your brothers and sisters. This is the carpenter's boy. Who does he think he is? Where's he getting all this, this, this spoil or he's talking about God? Who does he think he is? And um, Jesus said, a prophet has no honor except in his own town. And he marveled that he could do no miracles there. Their dishonor shut the heavens. Shut the heavens. And Jesus said, not only dishonor, he said he marveled at their lack of uh, their, their unbelief. So dishonor and unbelief are synonymous. The twins, they walk hand in dishonor and unbelief walk together. Conversely, honor and faith walk together. 
So Jesus goes from uh, Nazareth up to, up to the next town, Capernaum, which is up the road. And there's a, a fellow there called the centurion. Remember the centurion? And the centurion had a sick servant, a Hebrew servant, and he told uh, the elders of the, of the synagogue, go and tell Jesus, I'm not worthy to be under the same roof. That's a different attitude, isn't it, to the Nazareth attitude. The Nazareth attitude, oh, who does he think he is? To this fellow, I'm not even worthy to be under the same roof. Wow. That's great honor. That's great honor. That's honor. Honor. Yes. Honor opens heaven, dishonor shuts it. Honor opens up for miracles, dishonor shuts it. Jesus could do no miracles in his hometown because of dishonor, which is synonymous with unbelief. But the centurion says, I'm not worthy to be under his the same roof. Just say the word, Master. Such honor to Jesus. And Jesus didn't speak about the honor. Jesus said, I haven't found faith. Like this, all of this right? faith. So you see, honor and faith. When you honor, okay, let's go to the twelve spies were told by the Lord, go and take possession of the land. I've already given, I've already possessed it on your behalf. Just go in and take it. Honor my words and go and take it. And the twelve went in, and ten came out. Says, we can't take it. They did not honor his words, and they were full of unbelief. Whereas two, uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb, they honored the words. If we can go up, the Lord is with us. They're honored. They're the ones that had faith. So instead of getting all tied up with faith, do I have faith? Do I have not faith? Do I have just, just honor God. Just honor His word. Honor Him. Just honor. Honor is synonymous with faith. I put a post up today that um, it's not faith that attracts His presence. Relationship. It's relationship. Can you remember the first encounter you had with the presence of God? Most of you, I guarantee you, you had no idea about the dynamics of faith or grace. You didn't know all that jargon. It was just full an encounter. Relationship because of his love. And, and I learned what faith is. I learned what this. So, so I say all that. Honor and faith. So let's just look at honor instead. Not faith, just honor tonight. In regards to healing, honor. Do you honor Jesus and what he says about your 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 genome, about him healing you? Do you it's a matter of honoring what he says about your healing? That's right? That's easy? Still all I don't have enough faith. It's about do I have enough honor? Of course you do. To honor is easy. To honor is easy. So um, I can send these notes for a few more things. So we honor his presence tonight by believing what his word says about healing. Is it Jesus' will to heal, to heal you? Many know Jesus can heal the sick. Many Christians know Jesus can. But they have a difficulty with will he? Even I've had problems with it. I know he can. I know he can do anything. But will he? And that's the question. Will he? Jesus said, if you know the truth, it will set you free. Hosea, Hosea the prophet says, for lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. They don't know the truth. It wasn't because the truth wasn't there. I got too lazy to follow the truth. But God said, therefore, I'll reject you from being a priest to for me forever. And, and so there's a lot of truth out there, but the priests of the days of, of, of Haggai, uh, what's his name? Haggai, was it? He says, for lack of knowledge, my people will destroy you. Because you have rejected knowledge, I'll reject you from being a priest before me forever. So it wasn't a lack of knowledge. It was a, it was a too lazy to honor the word of God, the knowledge. And so it is today in the body of Christ in our nation. There's so much knowledge of the word of God. There's more knowledge of the word of God available, accessible to any believer on the internet, on YouTube. There's more the availability of great teaching on miracles and healing and there's more of it available today than in my day, in the, in, when I got saved in the uh, early in the 80s. It's more available, yet there's more sick Christians, more lost Christians, trying to find their purpose, their destiny. Why? Is it lack of knowledge? Yeah, there's a knowledge is there, but I think a lot of Christians are too lazy to get their word out, to spend time in the presence of God, and to honor His word by getting direction from his word 
instead of chasing after the next boss like the chance of town. Uh, I'm only speaking of one of the other tonight, but it's probably the person next to you. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. So, so, so what does Jesus say about his word? What does Jesus say about healing? If you 100% that Jesus is willing to heal you tonight, no problem. Okay, so I'm going to try and get you to the place where you know 100% that Jesus is willing to heal you. you. And it's whether you will honor that or not. whether you will believe him or not. Whether you will honor Jesus or not. For what he says. Honor him for what he says. Yeah. Okay, so what it says in Hebrews 13 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever Jesus did or said yesterday, he doesn't move, he says and does it today, and he says he'll say and do it tomorrow, forever. Whatever he says, he's the same yesterday, today, forever. He doesn't change his mind about certain things. Okay? And he doesn't change his mind about forgiveness of sins. He says uh, that, that if we confess our sin, he's just to forgive and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we come before him and uh, uh, repent of our sins, we will be saved. He doesn't change his mind. That's the same today. Anyone who honors that word today will experience forgiveness of sins. Yeah. Oh, I had a wonderful time on Thursday. I went to this house of a man who's going to go to jail for what he did. But at the same time, he's broken. And, uh, and so I went to the house and he's sitting there and he's just a mess. I said, you know, there's only one way out, and it's surrender to Jesus, right? It's the only way. If you've tried your way, look what it's It's going to put you in jail. I said, you want to try the way I'm going to follow? The way of Jesus? He says, yep, yep. He got up, prayed with him. Demons came out of him. He snotted. Tears ever, hooping ever. He's not a church guy. He's not in the church. This is just on the streets. Hey! Because I'm in my office. <laughs> And, uh, and, and then he runs to him and says, can I come to church? I said, yeah, bro, come on. It's the first day of church on yesterday. Um, so where are we going with it? He, where am I going with that? Where are we going? Track back, track back. I went too far down that road, didn't I? About honoring the words of Jesus. Honor the words of Jesus. Honor the words of Jesus. Honor the words of Jesus. Yeah. Words of Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what you can Repent of your sin yesterday, 2,000 years ago, people were delivered and set free. If you repent of your sin today, he'll deliver and set you free. That's what happened to this fellow on, on Thursday. So the, his word doesn't change. So what does he say about healing? What does he say about your moiwi? Your sickness, your affliction, whatever you're suffering. That's what Mark 30 and 31, he says, Heaven and earth pass away from my words. Will never pass away. So what is his words about your healing? What does he say about your sickness? What is his word that you will honor tonight? This is what he says about, well, it's about all sicknesses, but in this instance, it's the, the leper comes to him. But even though it's leprosy, you may not have leprosy, but it's a sickness, it's an affliction. And what he said about this affliction, he says about all afflictions. You with me? Yeah. He said, but I didn't have it. I said, I've got great variance, my hands. I've got this, I've got that. He's talking about that. He's talking about any sickness. Because he says this. So Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. When he came down from the mountain, a great crowd followed him. And a leper came up and worshipped, worshipped him. A leper. And he said this, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. This is a question some of you hear tonight. If you are willing, well, I hope he's willing. You've got to go beyond if he's willing. You're going to know if he's willing. Oh, yeah. So he, he knew Jesus could heal him, but he didn't know if Jesus would heal him. Yeah. He knew Jesus uh, had the power to do it, but he wasn't sure whether he was willing to do it. Yeah. He wasn't sure if Jesus was willing to do it. And so we read on, uh, if you are willing, you can make me clean, or you can heal me. Now what Jesus says back is going to determine what he's saying about you tonight. This reply Jesus gives the scribe determines what he said yesterday to the sick fellow is determines what he's, what he's saying to you and your sickness today. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Heaven and earth will pass away, my word will never pass away. So the word Jesus said to this leper yesterday is the word he has today. Now this is about, do you, are, you, are you going to honor this? Mm -hmm. Are you going to honor what he's saying to you? Forget about the great faith you need, just think about the honor. 
Yeah, what is, it's what did Jesus say? I love this. This is my favorite scripture I've used to push unbelief back. Jesus said, he put his hand on him and he touched him and he said these words, I am with him. Oh, true Jesus. True Jesus. I am with him. Be thou cleansed. Be thou cleansed. I am with him. If you're wondering whether he's willing to heal you tonight, he says, I am with him. Are you willing to honor him? Are you willing to honor what he says? Are you willing to honor what he says? If he says that to you, all you have to do is honor what he says. Just receive it and honor it. Say, well, I receive it. Be thou cleansed. Be thou healed. Thank you, Lord. Because he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Heaven and earth will pass away. He's in my words will never pass away. These are his words. These are the red words in the Bible. These are the Jesus words. And they're echoing throughout the thousands of years. They're echoing to every believer who hears. Oh, I don't know that. I am willing to be thou kings. All I've ever done is probably heal. Now, now, some people say, well, how come some people don't get healed? Well, I've got a great answer to that. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. It's a mystery. And the mysteries of God belong to God, not to me. I have no idea. <laughs> How come every person who Jesus shed his blood for doesn't get saved? That's not a mystery. It's a choice. But because every person I've preached to hasn't given their life to Jesus, doesn't mean I'm going to stop telling people about Jesus. Just because I want to do And just because some people are afraid for having God healed, it's not going to stop me from keep praying for people in Jesus' name. You, you can't use your why to stop you from your what, from doing what you need to do. Okay? So, so anyway, that, that's about all Excellent. the teaching on healing I'm going to do, and we're going to do the cleanup now. The first two foundations of the Christian faith are, no, no pastors, please. The first two foundations of Christian faith are, this is the knowledge of the Word of God that's in abundance and every Christian's got it coming out of their ears. There's so much knowledge of this, of this truth, of uh, these truths. So the first two foundations, there's six foundation stones of the Christian faith found in Hebrews 6. First, see, this is why the church is so weak. We don't even know what our foundation is. It's repentance from dead works. It's repent. And then faith toward God, doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection from the dead, and eternal judgment. Do you know we're getting ready for heaven? And when we go to heaven, we're going to sit on the cloud, play a harp, and flip around. Paul said, Don't you know you Christians are going to judge angels? Don't you know you Christians are going to rule nations? No, we don't know because we don't know. Why not? You've got so much knowledge and internet, you've got such an abundance of truth and knowledge. I know, get in your word. Mm. Get some good, good food in your heart. Get some good spiritual cry. Stop getting, get off internet. Get off YouTube. Get off all the best, great preachers around the world. Greater preachers than me. If you go and listen and eat anything that's coming from around the world, you know what happens when you eat a, eat a pie and, and you're not eating a bit, all the veggies, you're not getting all the nutrition. Oh, that was great. More dessert. Mm, more dessert. Oh, that's a powerful correct. Oh, God's saying this. He had an America. What's he saying about you? Oh, I don't know about God saying this. So we should rise up and do that. What's God saying to you? Oh, I don't know. That's right, you don't know. And the knowledge is here. But we're running after stuff. Sensationalism instead of Jesus. Instead of Jesus. What's he saying in the name of it? Don't try to change this nation. Try to reach your neighbors. <laughs> and if you can reach your neighbors, I reckon, um, and I don't go to all, I don't go to prayer meetings for cities anymore. Waste of time. Waste of time. Do you know of anyone in this nation who's won a city to Jesus? Won a town to Jesus? Lately? Are they not enough? I don't know. I know a few who have won a street to Jesus. So if I can win a street to Jesus, then I'll start working on winning a town to Jesus. 
And if I can run a town to Jesus, then I'll start working running a city to Jesus. You just got to reel up, reel up all this Christian nonsense that's going on. I'm going to do this and we're going to do that. We can't even plan for next week's meals. The church, wake up. Find out what Jesus is doing in your personal life. What is Jesus doing in your marriage? What is Jesus doing in your farm over here? What is Jesus doing in your neighborhood? Be Jesus to your neighbor. You love your neighbor. Closest neighbor is your partner, your spouse, actually. But it, it, it's about being real. Because if I'm not faithful and trying to reach my neighbors, why is Jesus going to trust me a city? He, he, he lets me go to nations. I love it. I'm just so honored. We have more churches in India than New Zealand. More people getting saved in India than New Zealand. Muslims, Hindus, communists. And there are thousands. More miracles over there than we see here. And yet we've got more knowledge, more, more access to the revelation of God in every space. So anyway, let's get off that problem, sorry. I'm not growing, sorry. I'm just frustrated. I'm frustrated at where we could be, where we should be, instead of where we are. What's going to take a war? What's going to take a revolution? What's going to take to wake the Christians up and to realize, oh, we're just inconvenienced at the moment. This is a persecution. It's not going to go through persecution. It's just a little bit of inconvenience. Uh, there, there's skullduggery going on. I know there's evil going on in all the systems. You understand that? Antichrist has got to do his thing. You don't want to stop him. You don't want to stop Antichrist. My word will never pass away. He who's already declared. Things are going to happen. doesn't mean they let evil walk over you. But at the same time, you pick your fights. I'm not called to fight certain I'm called to fight devils and darkness. I'm called to preach the gospel and occupy this land until Jesus comes. So I'm called to do I'm called to extend the kingdom you can't see, but a kingdom that's going to outlast every government and every government in the earth. That's what I'm called to do. That's what Jesus did. I just find Jesus. I'm seeing what he's doing in my nation. And yeah, so 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 anyway, so let's let's get rid of any crap that stops the flow of your healing. Okay? So, um, so to do that tonight, I want you to come forward if you if you feel that you want to do that. So here's here's this. What stopped the miracles in Jesus' hometown? Lack of honor to His word. Lack of honor. So if there's any dishonor in your heart toward Jesus, I don't think there is. You do it pretty good. But if there's any dishonor in your heart towards a brother or sister, wow. if there's any dishonor or any rogue in your heart towards a brother or a sister, that's dishonor to Jesus. Because that brother or sister is a member of his body. So when you dishonor, when I dishonor or disrespect a, a member of his body, I'm dishonoring, disrespecting the one who's the head of the body. Okay, so if you've got any, Jesus said, hey, look, if you've got a rubber rubber, this is the Maori uh, East Coast version. <laughs> if you have a rubber rubber with somebody and you do not forgive them, Matthew 18, neither will my heavenly Father forgive you of your rubber rubber. He will love you, but he won't forgive you. And that area of your life will be under the, the power of the devil. And he'll be able to do what he bring destruction to you. But when you forgive them, releases the power of the enemy and allows the healing to come. So I've, I've been healed because I've forgiven some people. Yeah. I had a lot of hatred to some people. One people, one person, one person, a lot of hatred. My honey now was all tormented for 13 years. I suffered manic depression. I hated what this person did to me. And Jesus said, if you forgive them, we'll free them. And I had to go through that process of forgiving them. And it's freed me. I've been free since 1985. So if there's unforgiveness in your heart, but you'll say, but, but somebody, they, they need to forgive. Uh, they need to ask me for forgiveness. Yeah, join the club. That's why I said to Jesus. They hurt me. They betrayed me. Right? And Jesus said, it's not what's right. It's, who, it's not who's right. It's what's right. So I forgave you. Much more than what they did to you. I forgave you all yours. A million bucks worth of sin. They only did a hundred bucks against you. Got me. So unforgiveness, if there's unforgiveness in your heart, just let your wide open up just go, scan, scan, you'll know. I don't need to preach, preach, preach till you get it. You got it. 
because I won't hold the spirit in you. Uh, other things that can block the flow of healing that uh, you need to repent of. So the first thing is repent of. Repent of the dead roots, faith towards God. You can't exercise faith towards God if you're still carrying dead roots. Some dead roots just got to repent of. So unforgiveness is a dead root. Wages of sin is death. It blocks healing. Occult activities. If you've been into seances, if you've been into uh, Ouija boards, water divining, tarot cards, astrology, horoscopes, TV readings, crystals, white witchcraft, black witchcraft, Mormonism, Freemasonry, lodges, where you make oaths and curses. <laughs> There's only one you I belong to. There's only one king. It's hard. It's hard. Or other ways, the liars and thieves. There's only one way, Jesus is the other way, the truth, the life. So if you've been involved in these occult activities, I, I used to be, I did seances, I did a lot of things, and it opened up the door of my heart to these spirits, these keyboards, and they tormented me, and they tried to kill me. And many of my people they get delivered on a weekly basis, these curses, these generational curses, that are caused by spirits, spirits, familiar spirits, uh, familiar because they know all about you. They've been on the earth for thousands of years. <coughs> They've been on the earth for thousands of years. They know our, our deep in it. They know our fucker papa. And they can masquerade as an uncle or an aunt or a mama or a papa or a son or a daughter. And they masquerade. That's a familiar spirit. <coughs> if your loved ones in Christ are born, they're in heaven. They're in heaven. So, put me out. So, so familiar spirits. Uh, pornography. Bestiality, sex with animals, sexual perversion, adultery, fornication, sodomy, homosexuality. These are sins the Bible says that will block the flow of God's blessing, will bring judgment on blessing. Lying, stealing, blasphemy, dishonor, dishonoring parents. See, this is what the Bible says. This is my doctrine, this is what the Bible says. Dishonoring of parents brings a curse. One of the greatest curses on young people today is they're dishonored to their mom and dad. It's just shocking. They don't know there's a connection. And so, uh, so, so if, it's, if you need to repent of anything and you want healing, you want prayer for, I don't do prayer for, for the sick, because I heal the sick. People know Jesus heals the sick. No, I can't heal you. Sorry, I can't. If I could, I'd go and touch you all before I even preach, and we'll go home. But I can't heal. Jesus heals. I'm the hose, he's the water that flows through. He's the water. He's the healer. And I'm honored that he would flow through me in that capacity. But what flows from me, I wanted to stay in you. I want you to make sure you got all that any, any rubbish out of the way. So you retain your healing, your health, your whole Fair enough? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, so if there's anything in your heart that I spoke through those things that you need to, before God, not before me, it's not me I have you to do this. To him, it's to Jesus. Make your house a safe house. Yeah. Make your fuddy a safe fuddy. Where it's loving, acceptable, and honoring to him. And any of that crap that doesn't honor him, if it doesn't honor him, come forward now. Just get out of the way. I'm not going to pray. If you don't need prayer for that, just come forward. Make it before God. If there's anything you need to repent of, just come forward right now and just repent of that, and then we'll go to the business. Okay, don't mind, I don't mind. Save us from the wrath to come. He isn't going to punish us. 
He's come to protect us. He's come to help us. And sometimes we're just so stupid. I speak for myself. And I touch things I shouldn't touch. And I do things I shouldn't do. And it says, don't do that. It's going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt God. But it, it's just going to rip you off. You're going to, you're going to suffer. Don't touch that hot ring on the stone. Don't play on the road, son. Don't, you're going to get hurt. I love you. That's why I say don't do this and don't do that. It's not because I want to punish you. It's because I want to protect you. So the best thing you can do that I have found is to rain the surrender flag. God, I surrender. Instead of saying, God, I'm going to try and overcome, I'm going to try and stop doing this, I'm going to try and stop doing that. Oh, look, just surrender to Jesus instead of trying to fight some thing in your life that you're struggling with. Just surrender to Jesus. Surrender that to Jesus. Wave your white flag and he will see it. When he sees your white flag, it doesn't mean he's coming to destroy you. <clears throat> when you wave the white flag of surrender, he frees you. He frees you. When you surrender your sin to Jesus, he frees you. When you surrender, when I surrendered my violence, I surrendered my anger, my bitterness, when I surrendered it to him, it didn't make me a captive, it actually set me free. Set me free. When you surrender the things that, that you're struggling with, it's about surrendering to Him, not fighting them. Surrender it to Him, and He will help you. He's the deliverer. So, come and you through this prayer, please. We just repeat it after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I ask for forgiveness for dishonoring Your Word. Honoring your love and your truth in my life. I want my body, my heart to be a safe house for you. A house where you feel loved, honored, and accepted every day. So forgive me, Lord. All the dead works I haven't repented of. The selfishness or sin that I haven't let go. Forgive me, Lord. You said if I confess my sin, if I repent of my sin, you will cleanse me, free me. So, Lord Jesus, Help me now. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry. I apologize. Holy Spirit. For dishonoring your word. Your presence. Forgive my parents. I forgive the people. according to your mercy I just decree Lord your grace here yeah. I thank you for the forgiveness of sins but thank your word you, never changes you're the same yesterday today forever I thank you for your grace Lord yeah. just breaking yokes of oppression breaking off generational curses yeah. causing Lord generational spirits familiar spirits to go uh, causing Lord God gener uh, uh, those uh, those um, yeah those inherited spirits to leave just just routing them now Lord I thank you the battle has been won Thank you, Lord. It's not by might or power. Thank you. The battle has been won. 
I thank you, Lord, that I don't have to try and defeat something that you've already defeated. We don't have to try and cleanse something that your blood has already cleansed. We thank you by the blood of the Lamb that the overcoming spirit comes upon every man, woman, and child here now. By the blood of Jesus, the overcoming spirit, the overcoming spirit, the greater one within you, that he lives in this world. Now, Father, it's about honoring the word, honoring the truth. The truth says, I am willing, be thou healed. I am willing, be thou healed. I am willing. So, on the count of three, I want you to do an act of um, an act of faith by a simple step, by stepping in to that truth of that word, where He says, "I am willing," and your step forward is draw near to God. He will draw near to you. So, the, your act of faith stepping forward is that you are stepping into His truth, His word that says, "I am willing, be thou healed." So that's your act of faith, that's your step of honor, and step into it and receive your healing. And um, see, the, the dangerous thing with healing meetings is that the Christians have been conditioned for a man of power for the hour to come and lay their hand on them. And they don't realize that Jesus is the healer. The Holy Spirit does the healing. And that they become dependent upon a human vessel instead of upon the divine spirit. And I'm loath sometimes to lay hands on people because they, they think because I touch them that they're going to get healed. And, uh, and, and it's, yeah, I know it says lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. But it's, it, it doesn't foster uh, a, a, a dependency upon the Holy Spirit. And I just hate that. I just hate that. And it's sort of been from a rock and a hard place. And some of you think, oh, just touch me, I'll be right, I'll believe. No, could you just touch Jesus and just honor him? Honor what he says. I am willing, be thou healed. If you can take that, you can take anywhere in the world. You can go anywhere, any place, and your honor of the presence and the word of Jesus will bless you, will feed you, will strengthen you wherever you go. You won't need someone to come and lay a hand on you. You won't need a pastor or apostle or something. You won't need that because you're dependent upon Jesus. You're Christ dependent, not man dependent. You're Jesus focused, not a evangelist focused or a healer or a pastor focused. But I love you, I love you, I love you, but I want to give you the, I want to give you the very best. So on the count of three, I want you to take a step into the healing presence of Jesus. If you feel like you're going to fall over, please get down on one knee because there's no one to catch you. If you feel like the presence of God is going to fall over, just get on your knee. There's no one to catch you. And so on the count of three, step into the healing presence and then I'll give you some more instructions. On the count of three, I'm going to speak in the Maori, tahi lua toru. When I say toru, that's a step forward into the healing presence. <coughs> you're not stepping into my presence. Would you say with me? I am not stepping into Norm's presence. I am stepping into the presence of Jesus. I am honoring the words of Jesus. On this step of faith, Lord God, I honor you. Okay, fine, on the count of three, step into the healing presence of Jesus. Tahi. Rua. Toru. Step into that. Step in. Just one step. And just stand and just honor that. He says, I am willing. Be thou healed. 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 In the name of Jesus. Be healed. You are forgiven. And if you're forgiven, then you're healed. He forgives all iniquities and heals all diseases. As far as the east is from the west, he removes iniquities. If he removes iniquities, he removes the, 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 the effect of iniquity, which is sickness and disease. It's gone. Now those, I'm going to call out. Now people from your head, the top of your head, down to your neck, I'm going to call out conditions. Ear disorder. If you've got an ear disorder, uh, put your hand on your ears. If it's uh, the back of your, if you've got a plate in your head, a metal plate, it's causing difficulty. If you've got a nasal condition, a uh, running nose, and uh, it's just not healing up, or that, that lump inside your nostril, um, the base of your spine, right at the top of the neck there. 
the eyes, fading sight, the coma, any condition of the eyes, put your hand on your eyes, and your throat, any condition near the throat, any throat condition, your tongue, your teeth, your gums, the infection, infection, yes. okay, now, put your hand there, just say thank you Jesus, I honour your word. I honour your word. By your blood, I'm forgiven. By your stripes, I am healed. I honour your word for my body. I didn't touch a woman, but she, she had a metal plate and a, and a, and a cancer growth on her um, on her cheek. And she started slapping herself because it just disappeared and no one touched her. She was just wow. where you were. And the metal plate disappeared. She went to the doctor and got it verified. It's gone. Now those of you who are suffering and it's from your neck down to your waist. I'm going to call out conditions from your neck down to your waist. Okay. And so it's your shoulders, obviously. Anyone if you've got your shoulder. And then sporting injuries as well. If you have sporting injury in your shoulder. Your elbows, arthritis, twisted elbow, fingers, fingertips, your joints, friction there. There's blood disease. I see blood disease. There's an infection in your blood. It causes the tiredness, weariness. <clears throat> yep. Now you have your stomach. So it's your stomach, your pocket, your, your intestines, your hand there if that's where there's disorder, your kidneys, your liver, your gallbladder, pancreas, thyroid gland, the adrenal gland, Jesus. the maturity gland, there's glands right now, <clears throat> all there, the, the central nervous system. And now I'm speaking this as Holy Spirit goes to you now. As I speak it out, he goes to you now. Just say, I receive. I honor your word, Lord. And if I didn't call out the condition, just to say, I, I receive, Lord. I just receive from my condition. Yeah. It's the hips too, the hips. The hips. The spinal cord. The discs. There's ligaments. Oh, Lord, just straighten that, align those spinal cords. Just straighten them up now. And through childbirth, your, your hips went out. The second one. And right now, you just twist that back back into alignment. Bring alignment into your back. Bring alignment into your spinal cord. Bring alignment to your hips, your sacrum. Bring alignment to alignment. Come into alignment. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just twisting that into alignment. Oh, I give you glory. I give you praise. And as those hips are coming into place, someone's stomach is, is being healed as well because your stomach was uh, being afflicted because there's pressure on your pocket because of the, the bones, the wow. hips. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Now from your waist down to your toes, uh, reproductive organs. Lord, we thank you, children, are a gift from you. I bless that which is barren, let that which will be barren be free. In Jesus' name. Let that will be fruitful. Let that low sperm count be reversed, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Go, low sperm count, go. Barrenness, go. Sickness, go. We're all going to tell everything you know in a minute. I hope it's touching these things at the moment. Um, the knees, uh, there's ankle condition, there's a sporting injury in your ankles, your legs. And there's a calf muscle cut there. Put your hand there if you can reach there. Um, this is a rather a personal one, but it's, you know, it's, in the, it's in the internal realm. Just put your hand in your puku right now. That healing virtue. Oh, the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood. Right. There's an internal issue there. It's a, a personal one. And uh, you just put your hand on your stomach. He's going there now. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. Um, so your knees, I want you just to... Uh, just to, to 
crouch down and stand up on your knees. Just, just test your knees. Just move because faith is an action too. You know, it's not just a, an attitude; it's an action. Just move your knees and stand on your ankles. Those who have had ankle issues, just stand, begin to stand on your tiptoes. Find the strength to come back into your toes. Strength to come back into your tiptoes. Glory to you, Jesus. Okay, the right through.